BC Calculus, Lesson 11.1, .1, Parametric Functions. So, what's parametric, parametric function? Why would we use it? Um, first off, it means we're defining y and x in terms of t. Something simple like that. Why would we do it? Well, if I ask you to describe the motion of something, you can give me a uh, you know, it takes this y equals negative x squared path. Well, how long does it take to do that? Well, we have to introduce a third variable. This is a way to do it. Um, that is the only reason we would use it. That, and I mean, it creates some really cool, like, really cool graphs and stuff like that. I think that's why mathematicians really like it. Um, but it's not always a function when you put it into y equals x, which is nice because it is a function. That's clearly a function. If I throw this and I say, you know, let t go from 0 to 2 pi, it's not necessarily a function. It might be a circle. Um, but that's okay because we can still treat it like a function and do all the calculus we want to it. So sketch the following curves. And the, the classic way to do this is to, um, excuse me, is to go through the t values. This is your t values. And start at 0, and then pi over 4, pi over 2, and so on and so on. Um, you really should learn to get good at doing this on your calculator. You hit the mode button. You go down, you go to parametric, and then you punch them in, cosine and whatnot. Uh, for cosine and sine, make sure you're in radians, which I am. Then hit the graph, and uh, it does its thing. Now, I'm going to zoom in so I can hopefully get a better look at it. And it's a little clunky. It should actually be smooth. Notice it wraps around itself a bunch of times. Um, I've got to go back and set my window. It's from 1 to 20. It should go from 0 to 2 pi because that's what we just asked for. And now it just goes around once and almost stops. Again, that's a circle. I don't know why it's quite so clunky. Let's see if I can change that. I think the step is the key. I don't know why my step is so small. And now, notice if I make the step small, it also goes slower. Uh, a lot of people would say that's an ellipse. Look carefully. It goes up to 1, goes left to right 1, goes down to 1. So you don't have a square window, which you can set if you want. But I'm just going to go with that. So I'll have to remember to change my t value later, or else this will take forever to graph anything. So when we graph it, We get something like this, and we need arrows. And if it isn't clear, you even have to say what the starting point is. And note that it doesn't overlap, and so on and so on. The converting it into a function, uh, an equation with x and y, is tricky. Lots of tricks you need to know. This one I say, oh, I know what x squared plus y squared equals. Cosine squared plus sine squared which equals 1. So the equation is, I'll just leave it, x squared plus y squared equals 1, equation of a circle. And like I said, that's kind of cool to me. x equals cosine, y equals sine. Hey, we just traced out a circle. Amazing what you can do parametrically. Now, this one... Um, will actually trace over itself twice. And I happen to know what this one is. I would normally do it on the calculator, but this lesson is going to be relatively long as it is. So it starts here. And around it goes. Boy, that's really terrible. And it actually goes over itself uh, twice. You'd have to indicate that if somebody was interested. This one's interesting too. X over 3 equals cosine of t. X squared over 9 equals cosine squared t. Y over 2 equals sine of t. Y squared over 4 equals sine squared of t. X squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 
equals one because that's cosine squared plus sine squared or sine squared plus cosine squared, however you want to look at it. Um, so it's an ellipse, which by the way is what we graphed. Again, I would really get handy at using the calculator to play with this and seeing what you got. Um, this one, we plug it in and we get something like this. Starting here, going up between 1 and 2 and stopping about there. Not going to indicate my starting and stopping point because um, it's clear that where it starts and stops. It's more clear, I should say. Uh, so this is clearly a parabola. So how do we get this to look like a parabola? Well, x squared equals t, which is square both pieces here. y equals t minus 2. We sub directly in. y equals x squared minus 2. So you might say, well, where's the rest of the parabola? So well, that's, again, what the p-value sets. Plug in 0. You start at negative 2. Actually, I can't plug in 0 there. That's just a coincidence. Plug in 0, you start at negative 2 and 0. Plug in 4, you get up to 2 and 2. So it goes to 2, 2. So 2, 2, 0, 2. And that's how parametric equations work. So let's do some uh, calculus to them. How do we find the slope? I'll walk you through it. How about concavity? Same thing as we used to do, uh, d squared y over dx squared. Um, definition, if they're both differentiable, and dx dt does not equal 0. It's something you got to go check because it can cause problems. Then here's your derivative. Take dy dt and dx dt and divide them. This is tricky um, to find the second derivative. Uh, it's right here. This is what I do. You take what you got, you take it, oh, that's wrong. No, that's right. Why did I do that? No, no, my bad. That's right. You take what you got up here and take the derivative with respect to t, and you divide again by dx dt. Yeah, get, get that one down. All right? And like I just said about concavity, use your second derivative. It should be positive concave up, negative, concave down. Points of inflection indicate a change in sign. So consider the curve defined parametrically by yada yada, sketch a graph, yada yada. Um, indicate the direction which is traced, all that stuff. I'm going to do something like this, and I'm just quickly doing it. Find the highest point on the curve, which is right here somewhere. Um, and I've seen this done a couple different ways, and I'm not a big fan of what I've seen in a textbook. Um, I'm going to take dy dt. I'm going to also need to take dx dt. And we get 2 cosine of t. And here we get 2t. And as long as I'm not at 0, I'm good to go. So we'll have to check as t equals 0. So dy dt is on top of my derivative. So I just set this equal to 0. 2 cosine of t equals 0. Cosine of t equals 0. t equals pi over 2. Could there be other spots? Well, let's hope that's what's going on here and here. Pi over 2 is 1.57. Next spot would be 3, 3 pi over 2 which is 5 point something? That's an interesting question. 3 times pi divided by 2 is 4.7. So we actually should check that point too. Interesting. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. At any rate, that's where my um, highest point is because that's where the tangent is 0. We're good to go. So... What is that point? Well, now we have to plug it back in. x will equal pi over 2 squared minus 5, and y will equal 
2 times sine of pi over 2, which I believe is just 2. And I believe this is negative 2.533. So our point is negative 2.533 comma 2. And that's justifying my answer. Now how do we find all points of inflection? Well, that's the second derivative. So take dy dx, which we haven't done yet. And that is 2 cosine of t over 2t cosine of t over t. And then we got some mess to do because we have to take the derivative of that. D, and I just call it y prime with respect to t. So I was nervous earlier that I made that mistake. Is t times negative sine of t minus cosine of t all over t squared. What a hassle. equals negative t sine of t. Um, I'm going to put in parentheses plus cosine of t over t. So, oh, I forgot to square it, t squared. Now, take that, because that's only dy dt, and use that to find the second derivative. Was this, which I'm lazy, divided by dx dt, which is 2t. And that gets you negative t sine of t plus cosine of t over 2t to the third. And then the question is, <laughs> graph that and find a sign change. And if you do, you'll say it happens at t equals 2.798. And if you plug that back in, you'll find there's a point of inflection at 2.831, 0.673. Notice how much math we've done just on some very simple concepts of parametric. You've done all the calculus before, then this is hard, but it's not off the charts. Just taking it and expanding it. And I apologize for shortcutting the end of that last problem, just running out of time and all that. Um, how do we find length? Not too bad. Follow the, follow the process and go. Find the length of the asteroid, the hexan asteroid. Asteroid looks like this. pretty cool actually. Yeah, lots of fun with parametric equations and stuff like that. So you do the whole dx dt thing. Get after all is said and done, I'm shortcutting here. Uh, you gotta square it at the end of the day. Nine cosine to the fourth t sine squared t do the dy dt thing and square it. 9 sine to the fourth t. And I would pause this and make sure you understand where those come from. And then you just plug them in. Now the hard part is actually figuring out what your limits are. Um, if you blast this all out and take the square root, you actually get... Um, Three. Let me write it out. Dx dt squared plus dy dt squared equals three times the absolute value because we're taking the square root cosine t sine of t. So the asteroid sets up kind of nicely. Um, and then you have to take the integral. Well, you can do the integral lots of different ways. You can do it from 
um, 0 to pi over 2 um, just to get the first quadrant. This is 0 and this is pi over 2 as it travels along. So you basically need to just say give me 4 from 0 to pi over 2 because they're all identical of uh, 3 cosine of t sine of t dt and you should get uh, 3 halves sine squared of t 0 to pi over 2 which is all positive which equals 3 halves uh, pardon me 4 times which is 6 which is very bizarre that an asteroid could have something that exact so again I know I'm flying I apologize um, a cycloid is like saying we've got a wheel here and that's really terrible not that much better and we have a point P and as this wheel rolls the path that point P follows and if you look at it it'll look something like this put this in green ever been on one of those I think they're called octopus rides is what it feels like as it gets to a corner it stops and rapidly change directions um, there's a whole exercise here I'm not going to do it um, but for an asteroid you get parametric equations a t minus sine of t where a is some value y is a 1 minus cosine of t. And those will define a uh, cycloid. No, you don't have to have that memorized, but I mean, it's just a lot of fun here. Um, and again, I am running low on time, so I will leave this to you to find. But if you do this right, you should get 8a. And again, you're going to do uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt and that should get you to 8a when you're done with the whole cycloid. Apologize for the haphazard nature there but it's already a long enough video there's so much going on. Happy mathing.